Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatus channel. Before we get into today's video, I would like to take some time to thank Pixart for being today's video sponsor. I've been using Pixart app for quite some time and I have to say it's one of the best apps out there for editing photos, especially if you need to do awesome edits for things like YouTube thumbnails. I use this app religiously every single time I upload a video because I really like the font styles and different edits, PNG files you can lay over your photos, really cool edits you can make to get that awesome effect you need for your video thumbnail. So definitely an awesome app you can use for your content creation, your social media posts and all that fun jazz. I mean as you can see here, super user friendly, very easy to use and you can check out that app following the link down below. So, awesome stuff. Thank you, Pixart. Now, back to the video. The thing about this is that it's a compilation of content that's been filmed over the last few months just with the process of treatment. So, you know, you're gonna hear me talk about like COVID, things like that, as it's developing. Very interesting time, so bear with that and uh, let's get right into it. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you learned something. Thanks so much for watching. Feel free to subscribe down below and ding the notification bell to know when the next video comes out. Awesome. Hey guys, so we have a bit of a situation here. Last night I was feeding all the fans and I noticed this guy has a really swollen throat you might see there. That's not normal at all. So I'm gonna have to book a vet appointment for him. Get him checked ASAP. Certainly is concerning to say the least so hopefully everything's gonna be okay these are really testing times right now we honestly have no idea if we're about to go into some sort of lockdown in the next few days or a week the government should or might be considering going into lockdown and closing all forms of business except for grocery stores gas stations and hospitals and of course with my luck i find that this gecko has maybe an infection so i booked an emergency vet visit for this evening at 5 30 and i'm gonna rush him over there and we're gonna hope that we can nip this in the butt or get him on batril or whatever they might recommend or whatever he needs because i don't know how much longer we even have that option not to be paranoid i'm just hoping that things will stay open yeah i don't know thinking out loud over here uh hopefully everything's gonna be okay with our little buddy all right, guys, so you can clearly see what's going on here and why that is absolutely not normal. So hopefully Dr. Brown will be able to address the issue, find out why or what the cause of this is, and we'll have a treatment option for our little buddy here. So let's go ahead and head over to Campus Estates now. All right, so I've just arrived at Campus Estates. Let's go inside. Okay guys, so we are now at Campus Estates and uh, I am here with my animal's vet, Dr. Brown. Hey there. <laughs> and so we are just taking a look here at, well, for the video, because as you know, a lot of my geckos don't have names. We call them Leaf. Oh yeah, now just he's going to be taking a look for examining him to see what the situation might be. Six screams. <laughs> Guy. Really, we're just trying to get him to open his mouth yeah, and threaten us. Yes. There we go. Oh, okay, so lots of stuff in there. Mm -hmm. We have the black color. That's normal. Yeah. They have the black. Just the species has a black pupil membrane. Mm -hmm. And then it's pretty symmetrical in there. Mm -hmm. The yellowness around the edge. Do you see that in your others as well? Uh. Mm -hmm. Not 100% sure. This is hmm. So this one's feeling very soft, which is good. I don't know if something hard stuck in there mm -hmm. at the moment. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can get fluid accumulate under there as well. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so you can see some yellow plaques along the edges. Mm -hmm. Doesn't hurt when they bite, we can say that. So you might be able to see, there's a yellow edge around the edge. Oh, uh, like here? Around, so if you look at the black part of the yeah. mucous membranes, just where it borders the pink, uh -huh. you've got the yellow discoloration. Let's see if you can see that in your others. It could just be normal color yeah. for them, and we don't have any like, intraoral pictures yeah. of leaf-tailed geckos. But 
I don't see anything stuck down there. Mm -hmm. When something goes wrong, they just <clears throat> crash very quickly. So I wanted to get the appointment set mm -hmm. up ASAP for him, but. He's cooperating. Oh, I see. In the back, maybe. Yeah, yeah so yes. there's the little pink opening, the trachea. Same as the snake. You can see it opening and closing. Yeah, and I don't on know. Either that side of that, I think we have a lot of soft tissue swelling. I think yeah. that area should be a lot smaller. It is on the outside as well. So, infection of some sort? That would be the first guess. Yeah, it could definitely be a bite, but I don't see a wound from an old cricket bite or something like that. Mm hmm. Could be an abscess from inside as well if he gets just any kind of little bacteria inside mm -hmm. to really sequestrate them compared to our other animals. And then we do have some other things on the list like cancer. They don't mm -hmm. get cancer very often at all though, especially it would be weird if it was so quick like this. Mm -hmm. Infection, I think is top differential general inflammation we could be thinking about it as well. Inflammation, just like the body's reaction to mm -hmm. something going on, it doesn't have to be bacteria or viral in there. Those are the common causes for it, though. So we'll try to do a medicam today, along with the Batril, which is the same as before. It's nowhere near as much resource information on the medicam compared to Batril mm -hmm. and other things, but it works really well in mammals. We don't really know if it works. Mm -hmm. as as. So sorry, what is that? It's just another anti-inflammatory, like a aspirin. Almost. Okay, so and it's oral. Or? It should be a liquid, very similar okay. to the other one. Most of our uh, Cats and dogs like the flavor, yeah. especially rabbits, lizards, I don't know as much. <laughs> if they're eating sack though, then it yeah. could be possible. Who knows? I think Patril, because the stuff has would not be very fun to give. Injectable medication? No, tiny little definitely like not. That, it's probably not feasible, <laughs> no. especially if it worked well for the other one of the same species. Yeah, it did. So, mm -hmm. And then Medicam it might work, it might not. We'll try it because the worry is it's so close to the, the breathing tract. You're right. If it swells too much, then that could be a lot. Yes. If we had a mammal in, I would give them an antihistamine. Mm -hmm. No resources about that though, so we'll, okay. we'll just expand it. Yeah. do both of them probably well both of them once a day to start mm -hmm. we can do an injection of the medicamp here mm -hmm. that's the easiest and the quickest to get in we'll just do it over the back compared to one of the legs and then from here going forward we'll do the oral medicamp to go home i'm okay. gonna poke with the needle all the time okay such a fragile species and then keeping your temperature just a little bit warmer if it's really tough to do at home with these guys i wouldn't worry about it if it was a bearded dragon or a car snake or a ball python yeah. a different one of them. course yeah okay guys so there you go, Dr. Brown really knows what he's talking about, but we're in a bit of a pickle of a situation here because uh, Leaf here is going to need the Medicam injection, so that's going to be intravenous. I'm a little nervous because I don't want him to drop his tail, and obviously, as you can imagine, these animals stress so much, but he really took the uh, prying of the mouth open to examine the uh, oral cavity there, or just his area, or buccal membrane, and he took that. Sorry, I'm a little frazzled, just not frazzled, but worried. He took that really well, so I think, and Dr. Brown also thinks he's gonna take the injection well. We're doing one injection here at the clinic, and from then on, at home, we'll be doing the uh, oral anti-inflammatory medication combined with the antibiotics to see how that swelling goes away. So hopefully that's going to work. This is always so challenging because honestly, a lot of this is so experimental with a species as uncommon as this. So I'm doing my best to document everything I can whenever anything does happen with my Fantasticus. And I'm so thankful and grateful that Dr. Brown is comfortable with me coming in here and filming and introducing himself to show you guys as well, because this is so important for all of you out there keeping your own platys. It's imperative that we document and share this type of information and the success stories or the lack thereof and sort out why it is that that's what happened, you know, to have a better understanding of how to treat these animals as they become more popular or prevalent in the reptile keeping hobby. So, all right, so now we're just waiting for him to come back with the dosages for treatment throughout the next week or 10 days or so, as well as to prepare for that injection. So I'll film that and we'll all cross our fingers here, really hoping for the best. So because he's only about five grams, we can't actually get a dose for the Medicam yeah. that we expect to reliably go in there. So we'll just end up doing it orally. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work as quickly as injectable, right. but better than working 
and better than doing nothing at all. Of course, yeah. All oh, right. Can't open up. There you go. Right in the front of the mouth, and then we're kind of holding like that for a second, just in case they can't aspirate. But because it's such a small amount, mm -hmm. the risk is so low. There we go. It's nice because the area we need to be is right under there. control of the medication is perfectly there. So the questions we have about absorption in reptiles aren't as relevant here. Mm -hmm. There we go. Sometimes if they do a little bit of coughing, it's not a big deal. Realistically, if you got 0.01 mils of fluid in his lungs, it'd be okay. Okay, so we're just waiting for the medication. <laughs> just want to say thank you to Dr. Brown. And uh, if you want to add anything. Yeah, well, we love seeing these guys, especially the more peculiar species of reptiles. We see quite a few and we always want to see more. It's often more affordable than you might think. There's only a few things that we can really treat for well, and it usually doesn't cost too much. So we can kind of start off with that, and then if it's not possible, we can always have different discussions. Really though, check the temperatures before you come in. Always the number one recommendation. Temperature being too low, it doesn't matter what we do here, we just stay sick. Mm -hmm. Perfect, thank you. So <laughs> Campus Estates Animal Hospital in Guelph, Ontario. Perfect. Thanks. <laughs> All right guys, so we just got back from visiting Dr. Brown at the vet's office. So I've set up a ICU enclosure here because obviously we're not going to be putting our little man back into the same enclosure with the female over there. He needs to be housed individually and monitored closely as he hopefully overcomes his infection. So Dr. Brown did administer the first round Medicam for reducing the inflammation in the throat. And now we're going to give him his first dosage of the Batril, which is the antibiotic to fight or combat the infection that we presume to be in his throat. So let's go ahead and do that now and get him into his enclosure. So our little friend here is going to be on the oral Batril for 14 days and then the uh, Medicam is just an oral strawberry flavor. It just goes on until it's done for the anti-inflammation. Um, he's been given one dose of that by Dr. Brown as you saw. And uh, now we're just gonna go ahead and give the Batril oral injection. So go ahead here, pop that in, and we are measuring out oh, <laughs> Ooh, 0 0.01 milliliters. Fun. Beautiful, that should be good. Now, the fun part is always getting them to actually ingest this. In the past, I've dis uh, diluted it a bit with some water, but uh, this should be okay. Alright, you're gonna be okay, buddy. As instructed by Dr. Brown, we just wanna hold him down so he doesn't take that into his airways. I'm gonna let him do a little bit of a treadmill walk for a sec. While we make sure that that medicine is actually staying in his system, he's lapping up his lips, which is what I like to see. Very good. Okay, so there we go, guys. That's day one of the treatment and he seems to be responding well. Uh, it's always a scare with these types of things because you don't know how certain animals will react to certain types of medication. But usually what I do is just make sure that they have some water right after. So I might even spray him gently over the face so we lap some water up and just ensure that he's staying really hydrated. He's still ingested the same amount of medication. There's no issues there. He's been through a lot of stress today. All right guys, so here's day two. If you guys look closely, you can already see that swelling has gone down significantly, which is a huge relief. Huge. And that's how it's done. Medicam has been administered. So now we'll do the Batro.
Hey guys, so today is day 12 out of 14 for our little friend's treatment here. He's making a lot of progress. I'm finding the throat is no longer completely swollen. When it dilates, you see it go up and down. It's not just like a big inflamed balloon and it doesn't seem that there is much of an infection left. I mean, really, there's nothing left, I'm hoping. So I hope that this is just sort of like killing off any remaining bacteria or infection because we only have two days left of treatment. So if anything persists, we'll have to go for a follow-up visit. But otherwise, I think he's doing good. He's been eating and yeah, things look normal. So let's have a closer look. Guys, we're gonna do the Metacam first. I'm gonna see if by some chance I can do this one-handed. So what I've been doing, rather than just like shoving it down his throat, I'm just administering the medication like so. There's little droplets on the lip and then the animal actually does the rest of the work and laps it up for me so that I don't have to stress them out more. So, I mean, it's quite a game of patience, obviously. It's a lot more time consuming, you could say, because you have to wait for him to actually lick his lips. But once he gets started, you can usually get in there and administer the rest of the dosage right away. So it works pretty good. All right, guys, so we're just gonna do a quick update on our little friend here and see how he's doing. Um, I didn't record the whole process. There's a few things I wanted to share. After the treatment was completed, I noticed that two days later, the swelling came back. And obviously that was very concerning. So I emailed Dr. Brown and he recommended that we continue using the Medicam to bring down the swelling and that if the swelling wouldn't subside within a few days, that I should go back in to get a new prescription for the Batril. The reason for that is that the Batril would sort of deteriorate over time due to the fact that it was diluted at such a low concentration for such a small animal, it probably wouldn't be effective, whatever I had left from the first treatment. So I would have needed more. Fortunately, after about two days of treatment, the animal recovered fully. I've been monitoring him closely and um, we're gonna have a look at him here. He's still in an ICU container. I don't feel comfortable putting him back into the uh, bioactive enclosure just yet. I just want to really monitor him, watch his weight, and make sure he's eating well. But he's just about ready to go. It's been well over a month now that he's been treated. So that's that. All right, guys, so here's our little buddy. He's going to shed right now. But the most important thing I want to show you guys is that his illness is cleared up. Now, I did want to share something with you guys. The intention behind this video is to promote the importance of seeking medical intervention when it is necessary. I think a lot of people shy away from seeing a vet because they're afraid of how much it's going to cost and they think that their animal might not make it, that the vet doesn't know what they're doing. And while those fears come from a sincere place, it's, it's not right. You can't think like that. Now, I want to show you guys my bill here. So first of all, if you see this, the costs incurred were not that expensive. For me to take my animal in to the vets and get the two medications, my total invoice came to $159. Now, assuming that this isn't going to happen frequently, that's not that big of a deal, you know? And if that's truly something you couldn't afford, respectfully, maybe you need to reconsider owning a pet. Now, I'm not saying you should have thousands of dollars set aside for pets, and if you have tons of pets, you need to have thousands of dollars set aside, but this is the reality of pet ownership. You need to know that you might need to take your animal to the vet, and it's important that you put money aside. You know, if you own a bearded dragon, a leopard gecko, crested gecko, or anything, consider putting five to $10 aside every week into an account or whatever, a piggy bank, and just have that money set aside that if something goes wrong, you're ready to roll because yeah, odds are it's not gonna be too big of a deal and you know, you might be spending 100 to $200. That happens. It's important and I'm grateful that my vet, Dr. Brown, is happy to show or allow me to film the vet visits so that I can, you know, promote this to you guys to show you the importance 
of seeing a vet when necessary and a good vet that deals with reptiles. So anyways, I'm rambling. I hope that makes some sense. I hope you learned something from this experience. I'm very grateful that my gecko is now doing well thanks to Dr. Brown. I'd like to thank you for watching this video. I hope you're all doing well in quarantine and that you're all safe and healthy, your families as well. And I look forward to seeing you guys in another video again soon. Bye.